The most terrifying type of murder to me is when a person kills for no apparent reason. And that's basically what we have today. Hello, true crimeers. This is the case of Joseph Ernest Atkins. Viewer discretion is advised. Joseph Ernest Atkins was born in June of 1947. His birth father basically wasn't in the picture, and his mom, she was a sex worker. And she got pregnant when she did not mean to, and she did not want to keep uh, Joseph. So she almost immediately gave him up. He was quickly adopted by uh, Gladys and Benjamin Atkins, and they lived in North Charleston, South Carolina. Allegedly, Benjamin Atkins, his adoptive father, uh, I guess would hit Joseph all the time. He would beat him. Uh, there was a lot of abuse in the house. He would also apparently abuse, um, you know, his wife. Joseph also had a half-brother in this situation. His name was Charles. Charles was basically a dick. Uh, Charles would always pick on Joseph and beat up on him, bully him, that kind of thing. There was, I guess, uh, a situation in which Charles stabbed Joseph in the stomach uh, and required Joseph to get emergency surgery, which, you know, saved his life. But I guess Charles didn't get into any kind of trouble for this, which is a little uh, odd. Gladys Atkins, who was his adoptive mother, uh, she died when Joseph was 15. He said he thinks it's due to the numerous head injuries that she received during the abuse from Benjamin. By the 60s, Joseph was fighting in the Vietnam War. He would go on to recount how often he saw people just brutally killed. He heard and saw his fellow uh, soldiers being tortured for hours on end. And this would, you know, give him some significant PTSD, understandably. By 1969, he was sent back to the United States and he was done in Vietnam. He was given the Vietnam Campaign Medal, also a Vietnam Service Medal, and then a National Defense Service Medal. Shortly after he got back from Vietnam, this is still in 1969, um, he and his brother, his half-brother, Charles, are over at a friend's house, just, I guess, at a party, and just hanging out, having a good time. And this was actually on New Year's Eve, so December 31st, 1969. Apparently, Joseph and Charles got into a very heated argument there at this party. So this prompted Joseph to just leave the friend's house, and he hoofed it on foot a couple of miles back to their home where he retrieved a shotgun, and then he walked all the way back to the friend's house, walked inside, pointed the shotgun at his half-brother Charles, and pulled the trigger. Charles fell to the ground and was dead immediately. Joseph then casually walked out, shot out some of the windows of this house, and then walked back home. By the way, unfortunately, I don't, I cannot find any photos um, for most of the story or pretty much any of it. Uh, so you'll have to stare at my face uh, most of this. <laughs> so by March of 1970, Joseph had gone to court for this and they were just about to essentially um, enter a plea agreement for manslaughter. But then when the judge asked uh, Joseph, you know, you know, why he was doing that, why he was agreeing to manslaughter and if he understood what was going on. And in this, he said that he, during the altercation with his brother Charles, he said he felt his life was in danger. So that's why he went and got a gun and came back and shot him. The judge then said, well, then that sounds like this is a self-defense case. Therefore, I cannot accept your plea deal for manslaughter. So this has to go to trial. And that's what happened. The jury did not believe uh, the story Joseph said about this whole self-defense thing. And so he was then sentenced to life in prison. If he had gotten manslaughter, he would have gotten significantly less time. By 1980, uh, Joseph was actually up for parole for the first time. And his father, Benjamin, whose son, whose birth son was killed by Joseph, uh, would go to the parole board and state that Joseph deserves a second chance. Um, you know, he, he should be released. And 
that's what happened. Uh, Joseph Atkins was released from prison. He was paroled in 1980. So after this, he moved into a duplex that his father now owned um, in North Charleston, South Carolina. Joseph had a really hard time uh, keeping a job. He would go bounce around from job to job. His criminal history and his erratic behavior just made it very difficult for him to find work. And also he became an alcoholic. Uh, and so there was just a lot of issues, not to mention his mental health struggles with the PTSD. His life was just a mess. Joseph didn't really have a chance from just like the beginning of his life. In the other part of this duplex, um, another a family basically would move in in 1985. Uh, this was a man named Aaron Polite, and then his common-law wife, uh, Fata Patterson, and their 13-year-old daughter, Karen Patterson. They never really interacted with Joseph at all. Joseph never interacted with them. They really barely knew each other at all. They didn't really cross paths despite living in a duplex. It's just, they were just really just sort of more casual neighbors. It was October 27th, 1985. Joseph had gone out to some bars, drank uh, a lot of alcohol, and got pretty intoxicated. Joseph goes back to his portion of the duplex, goes inside, he grabs a machete, a sawed-off shotgun, and a 38 caliber revolver, and he basically loads himself up and he begins to approach the other portion of the duplex where this family now lived. This was still uh, early, early, early in the morning. This is before the sun had even come up yet. Now, Aaron Polite had basically heard a noise outside. He looked out and he saw Joseph approaching the duplex with all of these weapons on him. This is when Aaron's wife tries to call Benjamin Atkins next door, but when she picks up the phone, there's no dial tone. That's because the phone lines had been cut. Later, it would be discovered that Joseph had cut the phone lines. Aaron's wife manages to sneak out of their portion of the duplex and get into Benjamin's portion of the duplex to alert him and also try to pick up the phone to call 911. Aaron goes back to his room and all of a sudden he hears a loud gunshot. Aaron rushes out of his room and he sees Joseph Atkins standing in the doorway of his 13-year-old daughter, Karen. He's holding a machete and a sawed-off shotgun. Joseph turned and saw Aaron standing right there and Aaron booked it and he managed to basically jump out of a, a window, a screen door window. Aaron had fired off around towards him but did not come into contact with him. At the same time, Aaron's wife is now walking out of Benjamin Atkins' portion of the duplex. That is when Joseph comes out, sees her, points the gun at her, and right as he's about to fire, uh, Benjamin Atkins basically gets in the way, and as Joseph fires, shoots Benjamin, his adoptive father, and he shot him in the shoulder. Benjamin would collapse to the ground, and he bled out profusely, um, and eventually, unfortunately, he as well would die. So Aaron's wife goes back into Benjamin's house. She kicks the door closed and she basically is now trying to crawl on her hands and knees through Benjamin's blood uh, to get back to the phone. As she's doing this, she said she screams, oh God, please help me now. And then she heard Joseph say, God cannot help you now. Joseph then shot around through the window of Benjamin's portion of the duplex. He then shot at Benjamin's vehicle, and then Joseph hopped on a motorcycle that they had, and he sped off. The police were basically just arriving as he was taking off, and so a four-mile-ish uh, police chase would ensue where they were able to finally stop him and apprehend him without incident. On his person, he had the machete and a box of 38 caliber um, ammunition. Back at the scene, uh, they would confirm that Benjamin Atkins had passed away from his injuries, and 13-year-old Karen Patterson had a gunshot wound through, with a shotgun through her head, and she was also deceased. So in January of 1986, Joseph Atkins was charged with two counts of murder, and also two counts of attempted murder, as well as several other charges related to burglary and assault. 
They produced a witness at the trial who said that Joseph was at a bar earlier that night, and he said, quote, Well, when I go home, anything that I see in sight, I'm going to kill. End quote. It's a bit of a red flag. I don't know why anyone didn't stop him, but here we are. It sounds like the defense did try to bring up, you know, um, Joseph's war service, uh, the fact that he has PTSD with a lot of mental health issues. But uh, they determined that the murders were essentially, for the most part, premeditated. Um, but he didn't have a reason to kill this family because he didn't know them. He just wanted to kill people. Uh, and there is no explanation for it. There is literally no reason. There is no motive. There is nothing. But it was premeditated. He wanted to kill. So the jury would find him guilty and he would be sentenced to death. Uh, he did try to appeal and try to get like life sentences without parole, with parole. He tried for clemency, but every single one of those appeals were denied. On January 23rd, 1999, at the Broad River Correctional Institution in South Carolina, Joseph Ernest Atkins was executed by lethal injection. His final meal was steak, french fries, corn on the cob, a salad, and chocolate pudding for dessert. And he gave no final words. Now, I have no sympathy for people who murder, uh, but it, it does also beg the question, like, had we treated the soldiers who came back from such brutal uh, circumstances, you know, better, would stuff like this have happened? Because Joseph isn't the only one um, who was former Vietnam, former soldier who's had PTSD to have gone on to do stuff like this. I've talked about uh, several cases before it, in, including ones that led to a death sentence. And there is a certain tragedy there, right? I mean, it's it's tragic that this person, these people whose lives they were willing to sacrifice for the country would then go on to not be taken care of by that country, right? Um, and not get the proper mental health care and go on to do stuff like this and then get executed. It's just this weird full circle that doesn't make any sense. Uh, and you can see the tragedy in that. And you can feel sorry for people like Joseph for the circumstances, but at the same time, they still committed murder with intent. This was a deliberate act of murder, unfortunately. And so it's just a very like you have like you have these very like polarizing thoughts and opinions on cases like this. It's just sad. There are a lot of victims um, in cases like this. But that is it for this case, True Crime I hope you found it interesting. Um, as usual, if you have tripped, fallen, and stumbled your way into this video, hello, I'm Mike. I tell true crime stories here on YouTube. Also over on TikTok. My TikTok is linked below in the link tree in the description of this video. So please feel free to follow me there and subscribe here and give this video a like. Thank you. Next, if there's a case you want me to cover, please email me. That's listed below as well. Just email me the name of the person, where it happened, when it happened, and I will add it to the list. And then I will eventually cover it. I just can't tell you when because I pick my cases at random. Next, if you want to support me anyway, we do sell merch, t-shirts, hoodies, a wine glass, stuff like that, and we do ship all over the entire world. That is also linked in the link tree and below. And then lastly, if you have a Discord account and you want to join my Discord server, please feel free to do so also in the link tree below, but be over the age of 18 or else you will be kicked out of there. All right. But that is it for this video. True crime, a rooty dooney ding a dong ding-dongs. Eh. Hold on. All right, someone wants to say goodbye, huh, Mama? You want to say goodbye? 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 Want to say anything? Anything at all? Nothing? You've got nothing. You want to say goodbye? 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 Nothing. All right. Well, she's a jerk. <laughs> All right. Toodle loose.